Hello and welcome to Sports Fan Entertainment and it is time for an updated 2019 NFL Power Rankings. This is following the first week of the 2019 NFL Free Agency period. But before I begin, okay, and you're going to hate these Power Rankings, can you give me a little bit of credit? This is hard. This is hard to do because everyone's optimistic right now. We're so far away from the 2019 NFL season and even beginning, everyone wants to believe, every fan base wants to believe that the franchise is headed up rather than down or at least neutral. And we're just going to disagree on these things. But feel free to put your own power rankings in the comments below and let other people criticize them because you're going to have plenty of fun criticizing mine. So this is how we're going to do it. We're going to go from 32 to number one. I'm going to say something, at least a sentence, about each team, but I'm not trying to be here for 30 minutes, so we're going to keep this pretty quick. I'm sorry, but this is the way we have to do things. Let's get started. Number 32, Miami Dolphins. They're a damn disaster. All right, Fitzpatrick is looking to start a quarterback next year, and they may trade for Josh Rosen or draft Drew Locke or Dwayne Haskins, but they're emptying the cupboard. Cameron Wake is gone. Ryan Tannehill is gone. They look like they're taking for Tua Tunga by low in 2020, or maybe they're going to draft a rookie quarterback this year. Either way, I had to put them at 32. 31, Arizona Cardinals, and yes, they are on the way up. I'm not expecting them to be the worst team in the league next year, but we're not sure who their quarterback's going to be right now, and if they do draft Kyler Murray, they will rise because I'm all in on Kyler Murray, but for right now, guys, you're still at the bottom of the league. You're still 31 to me in these power rankings. Number 30, New York Giants. Eli Manning is still your starting quarterback. Odell Beckham is gone. Olivier Vernon is gone. Landon Collins is gone. And you got some other guys in there like Jabril Peppers. You signed Golden Tate. But the Giants just still look like one of the worst teams in the league right now. They have to be at the bottom of any power rankings to me. I'm sorry. David Gettleman looking like a joke right now. And these first round picks might come in and do something. But this is pre-draft, not post-draft. Giants at number 30. 29, Washington Redskins. And they probably deserve to be higher than this. I understand. They went 7-9 last year, and that was with the end of last year being a complete disaster. And they still went 7-9. Josh Johnson was out there, and they still went 7-9. But they're not even talking to Jay Gruden right now about free agent decisions. It looks like this is just a year to transition. Doesn't look like they're really going to make a playoff push. I love the Lennon Collins signing, but 29, Washington Redskins. 28, Cincinnati Bengals. I liked the addition of Zach Taylor as your new head coach. Hopefully he comes in and gets Andy Dalton back to MVP form. But there's not much to get excited about the Bengals right now. And they made a bunch of bizarre free agent moves. Signing a bunch of mediocre to just straight up bad offensive linemen. Bengals had to come in at number 28. Number 27, Oakland Raiders. They're making improvements. Antonio Browns added to the roster. Uh, added Tyrell Williams as well. Added some pieces defensively. Added Trent Brown to the offensive line. But we still have work to do. Okay, they were one of the worst teams in the league last year, so they still have to be ranked low to me, but they are on the way up. Buffalo Bills, number 26. Okay, they made some additions. Cole Beasley, John Brown, offense looking better. I want to see what you do in terms of your number nine draft pick in this upcoming draft. I like where we're headed, but I'm Still not sold on Josh Allen. That and, and and as a result, I still can't be sold on the Buffalo Bills because offensively you have Josh Allen at the quarterback position and an aging LaShawn McCoy at the running back position. I'm not excited about that. 25, San Francisco 49ers. Look, the thing is about the 49ers, they should be a playoff contender, right? We were all believing this last year. I think I had them going 10 and 6. But at the end of the day, this team needs to win something before we keep on predicting them to win something. I mean, we're, we're talking about now four or five years now where the 49ers have not had a winning season. I mean, we, we need to have, make them, force them to prove to us that they can win games. Look, I understand that Grappolo was out last year, but they put up points with Nick Mullins and C.J. Bathard. The problem is the defense was too damn awful. Now, they've added some pieces to it, but I just think we need Need to stop loving the 49ers so much until they actually prove to us that they can win stuff. And I think they will this upcoming year, but I'm tired of raking them higher than they deserve and them coming in and winning only four games every year. I'm tired of this. I refuse to do that again. 
Tampa Bay Buccaneers number 24, and I'm looking out for this football team because in comes Bruce Arians to help Jameis Winston. The problem is the defense needs help too. Okay, and Bruce Arians is bringing in a, a competent defensive coordinator, and they're making some changes defensively, but they lost Quan Alexander, who's not a huge loss, but he's a loss. And uh, they also added in uh, Shaquille Barrett, who, yes, he's a good pass rusher, but he's not great. So defense still looking to struggle next year, and listen, they have a really great draft, so they're still ranked low to me, but I'm looking out for Bruce Arians. Number 23, New York Jets. Okay, so they're definitely on the come up, definitely moving up now, Lee. Beyond Bell sign. They also signed Jamison Crowder. Hopefully he's healthy, though that's a big question for him. Some defensive talent as well. Missed out on Anthony Barr, but got CJ Mosley. They're on the way up. Where they contend for the playoffs, I still say they're a year out, but I like where they're headed. Number 22, Denver Broncos. You know, they'll be around the playoff discussion, but man, their, their division is really tough right now. I think it's debatable whether or not they're even better than the Oakland Raiders. I do believe they are in the power rankings indicate that, but they're still worse than the Chargers and Chiefs to me. They're still worse than most, if not all, the teams in the AFC South. I, I just don't see how you can rank them much higher than this. Joe Flacco will do okay, but look at this. The Ravens were battling for the playoffs with Joe Flacco healthy last year. They weren't in the playoffs, right? Was that Ravens personnel better or worse than the Broncos personnel? It was better. It was better at wide receiver to me because you look at the Broncos last year. Demarius Thomas was really flat for them, and then they ended up trading him. Tight end, they had nothing. Offensive line was worse than the Ravens' offensive line. The running game was better, but outside of that, I think the personnel for the Ravens was better than defense for the Ravens' defense was better than the Broncos' defense. You can't even debate that. So with a better team last year, Joe Flacco couldn't make the playoffs, so I just don't see how he's going to come in and really help the Broncos. I'm just not buying that. Broncos are number 22. 21, Jacksonville Jaguars. Okay, I get it. You added Nicholas Foles, St. Nick, and he's done a very good job leading the Eagles in the playoffs. But in terms of a 16-game season, I still don't trust him. And I hate your offense right now. Leonard Fournette, look, I loved him at LSU, but he hasn't done anything in the NFL. He's averaging like 3.7 yards per carry. His rookie year was his best year. He averaged 3.9. He hasn't proven to be a good running back in the NFL yet. Not even good. He hasn't even proven that yet. Honestly, people, and you can blame it on the offensive line, that's fine. Has the offensive line gotten better? No. So I don't trust the offensive line. I don't trust the running back. I don't trust D.D. Westbrook and Marquise Lee and Keenan Cole or Keelan, whatever his name is, Cole and D.J. Chark at the wide receiver position and, and tight end Ben Mo Mo Moyak or Mayak or whatever it is. Who? Okay, I don't trust them. 21 Jacksonville Jaguars. 20 Detroit Lions. They're on the come up. I like the Detroit Lions. The next three teams, I think, are so close. I really can't differentiate them. I like the moves that they made, but we have to start drafting better in Detroit. And I need to see some pride or some Karrion Johnson. Jared Davis did some good things last year in terms of getting after the quarterback. I need to see him improve in coverage as well because he is a linebacker, not a defensive end. But I like where we're headed right now in Detroit. Carolina Panthers, again, I think they're about equal with the Detroit Lions. They should be competing for the playoffs. Will they get in? It'll be tight. We'll see. I want to know what happened last year. Why did everything fall apart? And now Cam Newton's going vegan. He's swearing off sex. I mean, what is going on? He's saying he's not going to have sex for the next month. What is he talking about? What is going on in Carolina? So I just want to make sure before I buy into them. So they're stuck at number 19. Number 18, Atlanta Falcons. Again, I had them making the playoffs last year, and they disappointed me. They still did some good things off. Defensively, but their defense is struggling. Takaris McKinley, Vic Beasley, my young pass rushers are too inconsistent. Hopefully, maybe they draft another one this upcoming year and he comes in and does something, or hopefully these two can be consistent and forceful on a week-to-week -week basis. We need more help from our defensive line in Atlanta. Baltimore Ravens at number 17. I understand they made the playoffs last year, but I feel like teams are going to catch up on figuring out how to stop Lamar Jackson. It is not that difficult. Force him to throw. Okay, just put about eight, nine defenders in the box. Force him to hit a trash can, and he's going to miss almost half the time. Right? So that's the thing about stopping Lamar Jackson. I feel like teams are going to catch up on that, and I feel like he might get hurt as well because he still has that skinny, wiry frame. Very tall, which is good, but not very bulky. I expect him to probably get hurt this year. Ravens going to be at number 17. 16. 
team, Pittsburgh Steelers. Okay, so they're right above the Baltimore Ravens to me. They lost Antonio Brown, which sucks. They didn't have Le'Veon Bell last year anyway, but you saw what impact that did make as they did miss the playoffs. I think they will rally, okay? I think Big Ben, despite his leadership being questioned, will help lead this team to playoff contention. I do expect them to miss the playoffs right now, but I think it's gonna be very close. And I want to, I want the Browns to prove that they are winners, okay? I'm gonna talk about them in a second. So the Steelers are still a 16 and still playoff contenders to me. Cleveland Browns I have on top of the AFC North right now at number 15. They need to prove to me that they can win. I, 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 they should be a playoff team. Like, you remember that Raiders team, I want to say, was it 2017? Derek Carr had his MVP, close to MVP season. Yeah, 2016 Raiders, actually, maybe. 2016 or 17. The year they went, like, 12-4, and four, and then Derek Carr got hurt at the end of the year, and the Raiders were legitimate Super Bowl contenders. I feel like they'll be like that. They're going to be very firepower. They're going to get in a lot of close games. They're going to win a lot of close games. It's going to be fun to watch. But just as easily, the next year, they can go 6-10, right? I, I feel like it could be really powerful from the beginning, and then the next year, you're like, okay, we need to make some improvements because that team had a lot of talent. Derek Carr, Amari Cooper was doing some things. Michael Crabtree came in and did a good job for them. Defensively, Khalil Mack. Everything was looking great, and then the next year, things kind of fell apart. They need to prove that they can win consistently, that they can be mature. I don't expect them to be Super Bowl contenders because good luck beating, you know, guys like Tom. Tom Brady the New England Patriots, Andy Reid and the Kansas City Chiefs being this young. They're just too young. Baker Mayfield, 23. Kareem Hunt, 23. Odell Beckham, 25. Jarvis Landry, 20. They're too young. But I think they should be good enough and just straight up talented enough to win the AFC North. So right now, have them on top of the AFC North at number 15 in my power ranking. Number 14, Green Bay Packers. Okay, they still have Aaron Rodgers. And yes, last year they struggled with Aaron Rodgers. But... I feel like they were just getting tired of Mike McCarthy. Now Matt LaFleur is coming in, who, yes, again, to me was a year too early to be named a head coach, but he's going to help their offense a bit. And they added a lot defensively in terms of free agency. Now, I still feel like they overpaid, but they still improved, right? So it was an overpaid improvement, but it was an improvement, right? So it's better to have Zadarius Smith than to have nothing at all. It's better to have Preston Smith than to have nothing at all. And like last year, you had Clay Matthews, who at this point is nothing at all. Uh, Kyler Fackrell also had about 10 and a half sacks. I like Kyler Fackrell, but you could buy and hit with Zadarius Smith, Preston Smith now. You like where your defense is going, especially in terms of that pass rush. We still have Kenny Clark in the middle, Mike Daniels. Defense will be improved. Packers are number 14, but I still have them on the outside looking in right now, I believe. So it's going to be very tight battling for a playoff spot in the NFC. Tennessee Titans number 13. I really wanted to put them number 12, but I decided not to be too biased today. But the Titans have a very good draft class. That will change. I like this team right now. I think they're very complete, but they're missing starters. Okay, they're missing a starter at right guard. They're missing a starter at the edge position. And to me, in my estimation, they're missing a nose tackle. And I really want them to draft another defensive end. Those are four starters that they are straight up missing. Okay, if they can complete those holes, fill those holes in the draft, that'd be great. But you're not going to. You're going to get one, two starters max early, four starters hopefully by the end of like two years, right? So it, there's still going to be a couple holes there that concern me, but I really like this team right now. And you got your backup quarterback at Ryan Tannehill. This team should make the playoffs. Number 12, Houston Texans. Okay, so Texans come in at number 12, and I really wanted to put the Titans over the Texans. It all is going to depend on who has a better draft class, because I really believe that the Titans have better uh, uh, personnel than the Texans, except for the star power of J.J. Watt and Jadavian Clowney, who outweigh everything on the Titans watch roster except for maybe Taylor Lewan and a little bit of Kevin Byer and Joel Casey on a good day. Um, but they're just so far and away, it just it, it creates such a difference. So Texas coming at number 12, and they have more consistent quarterback play than us. Even I'll admit that. So Texas came in at number 12. Number 11, Minnesota Vikings. I still like the Vikings this year. You know, it was the first year under Kirk Cousins. Okay, they learned. They're going to get their rhythm. Let's get Dalvin Cook healthy. Let's improve our offensive line. I expect them to be improved and to return to the playoffs next season. Vikings at 11. Seattle Seahawks at number 10. Okay, so the roster is about the same. Didn't make too many free agent moves. They didn't lose anyone either but 
you still love Russell Wilson. He's still at the quarterback position, and as long as he is there, the Seahawks will be competing for the playoffs at the very least. He is too good, and Pete Carroll is also too good of a coach to let his defense be an absolute disaster, right? So they're always going to be around Seattle Seahawks at number 10. Number 9, Indianapolis Colts. So they had all this money, like $100 million in the cash base, and they didn't spend much of it. Now, they just recently, like two days ago, signed Justin Houston. That was probably the most significant signing. After that, not much, but they still have Andrew Luck, who continues to hunt me every day. And the young players that they drafted last year, the Quentin Nelsons of the world and Darius Leonard, they're only going to get better and more experienced and be become more knowledgeable of what's going on in terms of their awareness and things going on around them on the football field. It's going to get scary to watch the Indianapolis Colts at number nine. Dallas Cowboys at number eight, and I struggled with seven and eight. The NFC East fans are going to have a debate over this, but that's fine. Can't wait to see the comments below. I do have the Cowboys under the Eagles right now, uh, mainly because of the quarterback position, but... Uh, the Cowboys defense, man, it's young. It's going to continue to improve. Leighton Vander Esch, we know about him. Jalen Smith is healthy. He's looking good right now. They're going to only continue to add upon their defense. I like the addition of Randall Cobb. I don't love Jason Witten coming back from retirement. I mean, come on, dude. He was done. You know, two years ago, he was just doing these little curl routes and just sitting there. And like, I know he can find the open holes in these zones, but man, he just runs these 10 yard curl outs and just sits there. I mean, come on, man. Just give it a break. Um, but yeah, he's back and it, it'll be fun. All right? They're going to be a playoff Super Bowl contender, honestly, to me. Can they make that push? We'll see. Seven in Philadelphia Eagles. And this is because I still have faith in Carson Wentz. As long as he's healthy. That's the thing. But I love that they brought back Vinnie Curry. I love that they also added to this defensive line that they did trade away Michael Bennett, but they're getting back to their core competency there. They need to draft a linebacker for sure, but man, this unit is still strong. This roster is still strong, and they're still well coached. Need a running back for sure as well. There are definitely holes here, but because of Carson Wentz, I'll give the Eagles a slight edge, but if the draft does not go well for the Eagles, the Cowboys will go right over the Philadelphia Eagles. Number six, Kansas City Chiefs, you know, they're losing people. And I know their defense wasn't very good last year, so it's easy to say, who cares about D Ford? Who cares about Justin Houston? Who cares about Eric Berry? Because our defense wasn't very good anyway, but trust me, it can get worse. Oh, it can get worse. And it's going to get worse if you don't find new pass rushers. If you do not replace D Ford and Justin Houston, well, it's gonna get worse. You're gonna allow 500 points. I'm not lying on that. So the Chiefs have to come down to me. We have problems with Tyreek Hill, who yet again is having problems with the law. Okay, and we saw what happened with Kareem Hunt, okay, being released from this football team. And I know they still made the AFC Championship and damn near the Super Bowl without him. But I think they're going to feel the loss of Kareem Hunt more next season than they did the end of last season. So they're definitely trending down right now. But Patrick Mahomes is so great that he that they are still quite high at number six. Number five, Chicago Bears. Okay, the roster is damn near complete. They're continuing to add upon this. They're young. They're improving. They're getting better. I don't love the loss of Bryce Callahan. I don't love the loss of Adrian Amos. So that's why they don't ascend past number five. Five. That's why they don't ascend past the LA Rams right now. But if Mitchell Trubisky can take that next step, they will. And it will be very interesting to see them next season. They are a Super Bowl contender indeed. Number four, LA Rams, who are coming down a little bit to me. Okay, so they lost um, a couple pieces. And Dabba Kong Su, he's still out there. They might bring him back, but I don't know if that's actually going to happen. Lamarcus Joyner is no longer with the football team as well. Those losses hurt defensively. And God knows they need more help defensively. Jared Goff, is he traumatized? from the Super Bowl, right? Is he recovered from that mentally? Will that be a cloud, a dark cloud over him heading into the next season? That's something that scares me. It could be a great redemption tour, or you could see something similar to the Atlanta Falcons and Matt Ryan where they just plummet the next year. And actually, they still made the playoffs of Falcons, so it, it, the Rams should still make the playoffs, but maybe not be quite as good as they were last season. LA Chargers number three. And I, I really am very afraid of doing this. This scares me, frightly, okay? I'm afraid. You, you Jared Goff is traumatized. I'm traumatized about this because saying the Chargers are a top three team in the league, I mean, come on, this team could easily miss the playoffs if they just decide to. You know, Chargers is like, 
Eh, no, we're good. We're just going to miss the playoffs. We, we don't want to win the Super Bowl. We don't want to be a playoff contender. We'll, we'll just miss the playoffs, right? That's their move. Anytime expectations are thrust upon this team, that is their move. They curl into a ball and they cry the night away. And I'm afraid of putting this much faith and confidence into them. But honestly, I really want to pick them to win the Super Bowl. I really want to pick them to win the Super Bowl next year. Can they just finally just get it together? I don't know, because, man, the Fox Bro disaster last year in the divisional round, that was a disaster, people. But you see the talent. They're the most complete roster in the NFL to me. I think the Rams are still very close, and the Saints are as well, but I think they're number one. Can they push it over the top? I don't know if it's there yet, but I still love the LA Chargers. I love the signing of Thomas Davis. New Orleans Saints, number two. I hate the loss of Mark Ingram. I feel like you guys are really going to feel that loss. I know during his suspension, you guys still looked fun. You lost that first game to the Bucs, but you know, you're still able to win three games after that. But I really think he was just such a good compliment to Alvin Kamara. I don't love um, who you guys brought in from the Minnesota Vikings, Latavius Murray. I've never been a Latavius Murray fan. I don't think he's a, a, a supple replacement for him. So I don't love that. And I think you're really going to miss him. Outside of that, your defense is still fine. It's still improving, right? Sheldon Rankin's still improving in the middle. Marcus Lattimore, still very young on the outside cornerback position. Can they ascend to being number one? Or was last year their one shot? And are, and are they done now? I fear that is the case, but they still deserve to be ranked number two. And then number one, New England Patriots. They are the Super Bowl champions. They still deserve to be number one. And they lost some guys. They lost Trent Brown. Um, they were able to re-sign Jason McCourty, but he's getting old. Devin McCourty is getting old. So there are things to be concerned about. They lost Trey Flowers as well, but they still have Tom Brady. And although he's getting old, man, this guy continues to do his thing. And they have like 12 draft picks. They're going to draft well. It's going to be annoying. And their, their division, no one still can compete with them in their division. The Bills are still not a playoff team. The Jets are still not a playoff team. They're probably the closest one. And the Dolphins will absolutely stink. So even if the Patriots go 9-7 and seven next year, they'll win the AFC East. Now, how ridiculous is that? But how true is that? So with that said, those are my 2019 NFL Power Rankings following the 2019 NFL Free Agency period. What are your thoughts on my Power Rankings? Comment down below, I want to know. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like, comment, and most importantly, to subscribe. And until next time, this has been MJ of Sports Fan Entertainment, and I'm out. See you all later.